Some of the latest coronavirus news has everyone talking, and some of it isn't being talked about enough. Let's talk about all of it on this week's Healthcare Triage. The item that seems to be generating the most chatter is the recent news out of the UK about dexamethasone, a steroid used to treat inflammation. Before I talk about this, I just want to make it clear that almost everything we know at the time of writing this script comes from a press release from Oxford University. While there's a pre-registered report on which methods and analyses the researchers intended to use, we don't know what the final methods, participant demographics, modes of analyses, or results actually look like. So that disclaimer aside, although it's a big one, the current story is that dexamethasone significantly reduced mortality in patients critically ill with COVID-19. The press release states that there was no benefit of the drug to patients not requiring respiratory support. In patients requiring oxygen, deaths were reduced by one-fifth, and in those requiring ventilation, deaths were reduced by one-third it does not appear that a placebo was used. We at Healthcare Triage will remain wary until we see the published study and until we see further confirmation with appropriate trials. And while we would readily celebrate it all working out because dexamethasone is a low-cost, commonly used, and widely available drug, we also caution against the magic bullet illusion. While we would be grateful for something to bring patients back from the brink of death, we are still lacking solutions to avoid that brink altogether. The second item of business swirling up a media frenzy are toilet plumes. It turns out fecal transmission is a COVID concern, and flushing the toilet creates a plume that rises into the surrounding air. In a study published on June 16th, researchers used computational fluid dynamics to model the trajectories of virus aerosol particles during flushing. Their simulation estimated that 40 to 60% of viral particles rise above the toilet seat during flushes. They recommend closing the lid before flushing, cleaning the seat before using it, and of course, washing your hands when you're done. We'll also point out that all of these things were a good idea even before COVID-19, and that in public spaces where this is the most concerning, toilets don't often have lids. It's important to note that we don't have data yet on the effects of flushing in real world spaces, how much infectious virus might exist in toilet plumes, or if public toilets are a major source of transmission. For now, these data are something to keep in mind particularly in settings with COVID patients like shared bathrooms and hospitals. And lastly, information that we'd like to see a little more chatter about, the alarming rise of COVID cases in states like Texas, Arizona, Florida, Nevada, and Oregon. There's been messaging on this to the tune of, we're just testing more. But that completely ignores the fact that the overall percentage of positive tests is increasing. If you're interested in state-by-state data on where things are improving and where they're not, covidexitstrategy.org is an excellent resource. We'll include that link in the description. There are also people who feel this is of no concern because the number of hospitalizations are not concurrently rising. But hospitalization is a lagging indicator, meaning it's an indicator that develops from past data, which of course means that it becomes a clear sign only after the event it is signaling has taken place. We should also note that in some of these states, hospitalizations are already increasing, and that's even more of a reason to freak out. We recognize that some states are doing better, and that's great, but we've got to respond to the signals coming from states that are not. The consequences of becoming apathetic about this virus will not be pretty. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on how a study on hydroxychloroquine was retracted and what it all means. We'd also appreciate if you like and subscribe down below and consider going on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help keep the show going even during a pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gistner, and Michael Chen, and of course, our surgeon, Admiral Sam.